Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. We are officially now at the second half of the season with the first weekend of qualifiers for the Summer Showdown, third tournament of the season. Once again, back to regional tournaments, but we have to get through, of course, all of the qualifiers before we can get to the tournament in Toronto. So let's talk about all of the matches that are happening in week one, all Western region matches, no Eastern region matches this weekend. Eastern region kicks off again next week, but this weekend it is all Western region matches as it has been so far this season, starting off with four days of Western region matches. So, new meta, probably, uh, Junker Queen, very big in the meta. That's kind of where things are right now. Uh, a lot of Brig play, from what we've heard. A lot of Lucio play, from what we've heard. So it'll be an interesting team uh, composition to see uh, this stage, and it'll be interesting to see kind of what teams pick it up the best, which teams struggle with the most. All that jazz. Uh, but let's jump in and let's take a look at all of my picks for this week. Let's start with Thursday. First match of the weekend is the Florida Mayhem taking on the London Spitfire. These two teams matched up in the midseason madness. Pretty close series for them. A reverse sweep win for the Florida Mayhem. I think this will be an interesting meta to watch uh, for these two teams. There's some similarities in the way this game uh, or this composition is run. It's very rush-like, which should favor a team like London, who've been playing a lot of, obviously, Lucio this season. It'll be interesting to see how they perform with the Brig. Uh, I don't know if we've seen, uh, I don't, th or should say, I don't think we've seen a lot of Brig play out of Landon or even Backbone, but I don't really know if we'll see a lot of Backbone uh, in that uh, support role anytime soon. It'll be interesting to see if they run Hottie or they run Poco. That's really the team that I think is more interesting in this matchup. London, or F Florida to me feels pretty set in stone. Uh, we know we're going to see Animo most likely uh, because Lucy is getting a lot of playtime. Then it comes down to who is the better Brig between Rupal and uh, Sir Majed. Obviously, someone is going to be their tank, and then DPS will probably be... Um, why am I drawing a checkmate? And then uh, probably Xe, um, if I had to guess. Xe or Hydron will be the ones playing, but if it's a lot of Ash play, I would imagine it's Xe in that one. I think this is a very close game. Two very good teams uh, right now that are playing pretty well. But I am going to give the edge in this one to the Florida Mayhem. I think that Gunba, I mean, both of these coaches are doing a really, really good job. But I was impressed by Florida Mayhem's run in the uh, Mid-Season Madness. And I think that they, generally speaking, are a little bit more... Uh, I trust them more in different metas than I do London. London, to me, very rush team. I don't expect a lot of different things out of London. So I think Florida is the uh, better team, just slightly, in this matchup. I'm going to give a 3-2 win for the Mayhem in this one. Second match on Thursday, New York Excelsior taking on the Houston Outlaws. New York, let go of Kuki. They don't have a head coach right now. Uh, presumably their head coach is Gesture, I guess, but I really don't know who's leading this team right now. I have very little faith in them. It's a main sport heavy meta. I think they've looked okay when they play Brigitte, but I don't love their Lucio play so far. I don't know what to expect from this team. I think Houston is a little bit more set up in a position to succeed. Obviously, their support line is the big question here because they only they don't have a main support player. Uh, and while we saw some decent main support performance out of them uh, in the past, uh, in, in the kickoff clash, uh, we haven't really seen a lot um, of double main support looks from them. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, but I think the Outlaws are just the better team in that same position that New York is. So I think the Outlaws take this one. I'm going to say a 3-0. It very easily could be a close one. Um, and with a change in meta, it really is possible to go either way, but I'm going to get, say, Houston 3-0 because I just have no faith in New York uh, right now. Final match on Thursday is the Dallas Fuel taking on the Los Angeles Gladiators. This is a tough game to predict. I don't necessarily think it's going to be, um, like, I, it, it has the potential to be close. It also has the potential to be very one-sided. It's hard to say for sure. Meta-wise, it looks like we're going towards a kind of like Genji or Echo meta which does help the fuel a lot, because obviously Sparkle likes playing Echo and Genji. Um, they struggled with the Sojourn, obviously, and so that's a, a bit of a concern if that is where the meta goes, or they're playing a lot of Sojourn. I don't love Dallas in that position, though. I think if 
you allow Genji or Echo to be your main DPS, I think Gurio can do fine if he is just there to kind of assist as opposed to being kind of the star, which is what you had to be in the most recent meta. But the Gladiator is also incredible, and they are two-time defending tournament champions now. I think you have to look at the Gladiators as the best team in the league right now. They look to be the best team, um, generally speaking, and it's hard to pick against them. So I'm going to say it is a 3-2 in favor of the Gladiators. I, it could go very one-sided in favor of the Gladiators, but because of these unknowns in the meta, uh, potential Genji meta, whatnot, I gave the fuel potential to make it kind of close, but let's be real, it really could be a roll for the Gladiators, based on what we've seen from them recently. Moving on to Friday, the Atlanta Reign take on the Boston Uprising. Atlanta have been pretty good in the tournament so far. Uh, Boston haven't made a tournament yet, so that tells you everything you need to know about that. Atlanta's been kind of up and down in the regular season. I could definitely see this tournament being a little bit of a challenge for some of these teams who are now having to run a new meta, uh, a new, with a new hero, very new composition. It has the potential to be a somewhat shaky look for all of these teams, but I think Atlanta and Boston are two teams in particular that it could be an interesting one to look at. I feel more confident in Atlanta right now because they've obviously had a much um, more consistent season. They've been better so far in tournaments and... Even in the regular season, they've been better, even when they've had their shakiness. I still think they're better than Boston. I think this one could be close, um, and I probably am wrong for predicting it the way that I am. But I am going to go Atlanta in this one at 3-0. It could definitely be a 3-1, 3-2. It could easily go um, some maps in favor of the Uprising. But I think the Rain right now are just a better team, and they should win this one. And I haven't felt confident enough in Boston to give them more... Uh, to give them a map win, because I think Atlanta just looks too good, um, and I think they have looked uh, overall to be a top contender in this Western region. Second game on Friday is the San Francisco Shock taking on the Washington Justice. I want the Justice to be good. You all know I want the Justice to be good. I, I like the Justice. I'm not a Justice fan, per se, but I like the team. I like the players they have on the roster, and so I want to see them do well, um, but we'll see what happens, I suppose, in this meta. Very tough start for them having to play against the San Francisco Shock. However, I don't think that's a great way to start uh, your tournament cycle as the Shock right now. Look very, very good. I don't think this meta will be as good for the Shock. Obviously, it is not a double uh, flex support meta, so that will hurt them a bit. It'll be interesting to see how they perform, what they look like in this meta, uh, but I think the Justice have the edge in this one. I think, or sorry, I think the Shock still have the edge in this one with the Justice. God, no, not the Justice. I think the Shock of the Edge in this one, despite the fact that I don't think this meta is going to be as strong for them, I still think they should be uh, in good shape to beat the Justice. So I'm going to say Shock take this one 3-0. to zero. Final match on Friday. Is the Toronto Defiant taking on the Vancouver Titans? This is my first big pick game of the weekend. The Defiant are a team that I feel kind of down on right now. They're probably my least favorite team right now in the western region um that made the tournament um the mythes manis i don't think they look very good right now i think they're kind of struggling this meta has the potential to be decent for them uh chorong and twilight in the dps line i, I mean twilight's brig is pretty good and chorong's lucio obviously is good so they have the support line down i think pretty well and pretty convincingly it's really going to come down to how well they are on the tank roll and honestly I could see Hoppa being a very, very good Junker Queen. He obviously has the history um, of playing a lot of DPS in the past. Obviously, to play a decent amount of Tracer. He, you know, led or was an important part of the Fusion's success in 2018 when the Roadhog meta popped up. So I think that there is definitely the possibility that Hoppa is one of the better Junker Queens, at least early on, because he is the type of player who seemingly would be pretty good at picking up Junker Queen. Then it comes down to how well they can kind of perform in that uh, DPS role with Finale most likely picking up the Echo or the Genji uh, and Hisu on the uh, Sojourn or the Ash. Um, definitely, I think Ash are probably more likely. So I think the, the Defiant could be in a good meta here, but I have a lot of questions about this team. They have not looked great. I don't think last meta was particularly good for them. This meta could be better for them. Vancouver, on the other hand, of course, yet to win a game, but they seem to be improving. I think that though they made the change and got rid of Shockwave, something that I know there are people who are not uh, huge fans of that, I think that what they have done is given themselves a bit more of a well-rounded roster. 
which I think could be a big part of their success uh, potentially going forward is this kind of change to their roster that gives them a little bit more flexibility. It's tough to say for sure. I think the Titans are not going to come out right away looking pretty good. However, I do think that Mirror is the type of player who could have a very good showing on Sojourn, or not on Sojourn, on Junker Queen. That's the type of role that you kind of expect those tanky DPS players or DPS tank players to be pretty good at. And so I definitely think that um, that is a good potential role for Mirror to pick up. So I think this this game has potentially been very, very close. Vancouver, I feel like, are on the up. Toronto, I feel like they're kind of on the down. But I'm not yet ready to say this is the win for the Titans. I think the Defiant right now are in a better position. I actually didn't even think about Hoppa on Junker Queen until I was talking about them right now. And I actually think Hoppa on the Junker Queen could be pretty good because that is really what he has kind of excelled at in the past. And so I think that is a thing that really does fit Hoppa's playstyle quite well. So I'm going to go with the Defiant in this one. I am going to say 3-2 win for the Defiant over the Vancouver Titans. Pretty good showing, I think, from them in this meta. Um, could be enough to get them, hopefully, to be playing while the Toronto homestand is going on. Because you would hate to miss your own uh, tournament that you're hosting. Moving on to Saturday with the Lonely Spitfire against the Boston Uprising. My second big pick game. They're back-to-back -back this week. Um, well, I guess one's Friday, one's Saturday. This London-Boston game, of course, could be interesting. I don't know what to expect in this game. I think both of these teams are in an interesting position because London, like I said before, are a rush team. This is a kind of rush composition, though it's not full rush in the same way that what London has been running is. And Boston, I think Punk could definitely pick up the Junker Queen and look pretty good on it. Uh, obviously, they have a new player with Seeker. Who knows what he's going to be able to bring to the table in this one? Um, two teams in interesting positions. I think Boston is a team who really can get hot at the right time and could make a, a push for the playoffs. Um, you know, they can make this tournament and that would be a pretty huge thing for them to get them a point. If they get in over a team like Washington or a team like London, uh, who only made one tournament so far, they would essentially be going into the back stretch of the season with the same number of bonus points as one of those teams or both of those teams if both of them miss the tournament, right? And so London kind of in an interesting position to try to stop Boston from potentially getting that kind of really good run, uh, like what London had last tournament cycle. Boston obviously opens up against Atlanta, which is tough, but London is a winnable game for them. There's a lot of question marks. I feel like Boston is a team that I feel more comfortable in their ability to adapt to different metas. I just don't think they're as, um, their potentials looked as good as we've seen from London. London knows what they're good at. They're going to run that as much as they can. I'm sure they will try to run meta as best they can, but sometimes it may just not work. So uh, I'm interested in seeing what happens with this matchup here, uh, but I am going to go in favor of the Spitfire in this one in a 3-2 fashion. Definitely can see it being competitive. Boston is kind of a way this point in the season to get some of those like nice performances out. Uh, there's that game against Houston last year where they won 3-0, like big surprise. Um, and so Boston definitely looks to me like a team that is potentially on the up here. But I do think London is still a good team, and I would not, uh, I'm not quite ready to put Boston above them just yet. Next match on Saturday is the Washington Justice against the Paris Eternal. Two teams that are kind of down right now. I still feel better about the Justice than I do the Eternal, uh, based on what we saw from them in the most recent tournaments. Uh, but I think that there is definitely a concern here if you are a Justice fan, because I don't think this meta is particularly great for their DPS core. Um, I think we're going to see quite a bit of Assassin because, like I said, it's Echo and it's Genji and those aren't really in the... Uh, those are not Happy Zero Pool. And they're not really in Decay's Hero Pool either. Obviously, Decay is mostly known for his Tracer, but he also is more hitscan focused uh, when he's not playing Tracer. However, doesn't mean that they can't put him in. But Assassin's still pretty good and definitely has some of those um, heroes in his pocket. Uh, and if you're playing Ash, you're definitely going to put Happy in there. You're not going to put uh, Decay in on the Ash over Happy. So I think the Justice are not looking great meta-wise. It's not one that I think they want to necessarily play in. Tracer is not looking very good in this meta, so that kind of hurts them. I still think they have more talent and potential than this Eternal roster. I think Wub and Dove have been fine. I don't think this meta is going to be great for them. I don't think either of them are necessarily the best options in a meta like this one where you're expecting the Echo uh, or the Genji. 
I guess the Ash play out of Dove will be fine, uh, but I don't love it. This is not a good meta for Khan either, because he is not known for his Brig play. Uh, and so I think that this one should go in favor of the Justice. I think the meta favors them better. They have a more well-rounded roster. They have a more complete team. Um, they can put in opener um, on the support role. Um, they have two tanks, so they, they have more... Put, I guess, well, Paris does too, but I just feel better with the Justice right now. So I think Justice take this one. I think it'll be a 3-1 for them. I just think they are the better team right now, and so I have them winning over the Paris Journal. Next is the Houston Outlaws against the LA Gladiators. Gladiators still looking very, very good. I still think they should be the favorite uh, to win all of their matches, if not, or most of, if not all of their matches this tournament cycle. Outlaws have not performed particularly um, well against the Gladiators. They've had some okay performances, but generally speaking, they have not looked as good um, against the Gladiators as a team like the Shock have. Um, so I think the Gladiators should win this one pretty easily, pretty convincingly. I feel better with them in this meta. They have Funny Astro and Skewed in a Brig and or Lucio Brig meta. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they have arguably the best Lucio and best Brig in the league, and they're not the same player. So Shu might be permabench this meta, and it's like not a surprise. Uh, that's just how good this team is right now. I think the Gladiators should be favored in this one. I'm going to give them the win in this one, 3-1. I think they just should, should be better. I think that they take it in this one. Moving on to Sunday. Paris Eternal take on the Vancouver Titans. August 14th has been marked in the calendars for a while now as the matchup where maybe, maybe this is the one that the Titans win. And you know what? I think that's actually a very reasonable take. I don't love what Paris is. I don't love their support line in a game like this one, um, in a meta like this one. The Titans are not in a much better position with Masa, Skyrippa, and Aztec, but I do think at least like with those two Flexport players... At least one of them should be good at Brig. And in reality, I think Mirror has played Brig in the past too. Um, so like if you really, really, really are desperate, you could put Mirror in on the Brig. I don't think they will, but you could. Uh, I feel better about Vancouver DPS-wise, honestly. I think Aspire's fantastic, and I think King or Mirror probably can do what you need them to do in uh, that role. And then it comes down to tank play. I, I would give the edge to the Eternal there. I think they're the better team tank-wise, but... I think the Titans are better in a lot of positions in this area, and I think they've looked improved. I think their coaching has been better this season since DP came in. And so, yeah, I'm going to buy into the Titans in this one. I think the Titans are going to win. Get their first win of the season this weekend against the Paris Eternal. I am locking that one in. 3-2 victory for the Titans. It could be one-sided. Honestly, I do think it is very reasonable that could happen, but I'm going to give the, the Eternal some um, hope that they at least have a good performance, but I think the Titans take it 3-2. to two. Second match on Sunday, San Francisco Shock taking on the Florida Mayhem. Um, last time the two teams played, it was not close. Uh, the Shock won, and I think the Shock should win again because the Shock are still a top team uh, in the league and in the region, and so I don't think it should be much of a difficult game for them. I think they're better. I think that even though the meta is not going to favor them as much, I still feel better about them than do the Mayhem, and so... I am going to say the Shock take this one 3-0. Next is the Dallas Fuel taking on the New York Excelsior. I don't even, I don't want to watch this game again. Last time these two teams played, it was a terrible game. It, they gave me, New York gave me hope, and then they lost, and I should have expected that. I think both these teams are bad right now. Dallas, I don't think are as bad. New York is who knows what they are. It was a 3-2 last time when I don't even think it should have been, and so what can you do but predict another 3-2 in this one, honestly? Um... I'm not predicting New York. I can't predict New York, so 3-2 Dallas in this one. D I don't want to talk about this game. I just simply don't. So we're going to move on to the final game of the weekend, which is the Atlanta Reign taking on the Toronto Defiant. Once again, um, Toronto in an interesting position. I think they could be decent in this meta, like I said, with Hoppa, the way he plays. Um, could actually be decent uh, for this team. However, Atlanta still, to me, are too good of a team to really predict against them. They have been consistently good this season. They have been very good in the tournaments in particular. And so even if they're not as good in the stages as some of the other teams around them are, I still feel pretty good about them. And so for me, I am going to go with the Atlanta Reign taking this one. I'm going to say a 3-0 victory for them. I think they're the better team, and I think they should be favored to win this one over a middling Defiant squad. 
So there you have it. There are all of my picks for this week, the first week of the Summer Showdown Qualifiers, week 15. Let me know your thoughts on my picks in the comments down below. If you agree with me, disagree with me, whatever it is, I would love to hear from you on that. That's going to be all from me for today. If you enjoyed this video and more like it in the future, consider liking and subscribing. And I hope that you all have a great week and get excited for the Summer Showdown. That's going to be all from me for today. Thank you all so much. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye.